Hello friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks, and I'm very uh, happy to bring this tutorial to you because it's one of those tutorials that um, is made for the sole purpose of impacting someone's life in a positive way. Um, and this cancer cap was designed by a lady in my Facebook group and one who's a subscriber to my channel. Her name is Tina Norton. And she she made this cancer cap and um, also uh, with the, having it in mind that it's great for people who have alopecia. Um, and she posted in, in my Facebook group, Koala Knits and Knacks. And right away, I... I um, I was drawn to it. I thought, wow, this is like beautiful. It's really um, one of those things that uh, we, we all should make <laughs> um, to give to somebody or to donate to cancer um, care or, um, you know, we all have people in our lives that are, are impacted with cancer and and if we can make someone's life just a little bit better and encourage them a little bit by making them one of these beautiful caps, um, then then I am so happy to be able to take the time to make the tutorial for it. Um, I used uh, loops and threads, um, soft and shiny yarn in the color Snow Leopard, which is like gorgeous. It is a four weight yarn, but it feels more like a three weight yarn and it's very, very soft. Um, and, and then the white uh, brim, off-white brim there, um, was Bernat Super Value yarn, and it's very soft as well. So when you're picking your yarn, be sure to choose um, a yarn that's very soft to the touch, and one that's not bulky, because uh, you want this to, to just have a nice, soft feel to it, okay? And you don't want it too too chunky or too bulky. So um, I also used my Addy 46 and my Addy 22 needle machines for this uh, tutorial, and um, I just uh, am so thrilled by it. And I just want to say thank you to Tina again um, for your inspiration and for um, for the d design of this tutorial, or of this cap. I just think it's it's brilliant. Um, and it's, it's heartwarming. It's going to um, really, really be something that a lot of people are going to love. And I also wanted to um, make mention of Tina's... Um, Instagram page. I'm going to link it down in the description below to um, give her a little shout out there. She's um, a nail and beauty artist. And uh, if you want some inspiration um, and to see beautiful work, check out her Instagram page. Again, the link will be down below in the description. So once you have your uh, machines and your supplies, let's get right at it. We're going to use waste yarn. You're going to bring your last white and your first black needle in line with your yarn feeder here. You're going to go behind that first black, in front and behind to cast on all the way around. Just like so. I'm so excited about this because uh, it's just such a great thing to make cancer caps for, for women and men or whoever. Well, these are for, these are designed for women, um, but to, to make them for cancer patients and uh, and give them as a gift to perk, perk them up and make them feel loved and feel good. And and uh, it's just a wonderful idea um, that Tina had. And so I was just so thrilled to be able to to take her idea and, and put it into a tutorial so that we can all um, we can all do it. Um, I had a dear, dear friend who lost a battle to cancer um, just over a year ago. Well, a year and a half now it would almost be. Um, when I say she lost her battle to cancer, right away my mind goes, no, she she did pass away, but she won because I know where she is. She's in heaven and she's uh, feeling great and she's just um, having the time of her life. So um, I, I think of her because... Oops, oh my machine, I'm, I've got no tension on, I've got too much tension on my on my yarn, that's why my handle's doing that. So I'm talking and not paying attention again. And I'm doing um, seven rows of waist yarn. And anyways, I crocheted her 15 cancer caps when she was going through her battle. Um, and I just think it's just, uh, and then when she didn't need them, she donated them actually to the cancer, Women's Cancer, cancer Center. And so it's just such a, a beautiful thing to do. And I think of her um, as I do this. So now that we've got our waist yarn, let's put it between that last white, that first black. We're going to grab our yarn. We're going to insert it into that yarn feeder. In between the last white, the first black, we're going to knit four needles. Then we're going to take both ends of that yarn and we're going to pull on it. You've seen how it went down under that red divider. That way our tension is going to be even in these first few needles, just as it is um, in the rest of the row. But I'm going to take 
my yarn out now and I'm going to put it in this bigger hole. I'm going to add my tensioner that I bought from Amazon. They come in sets of two. And I'm going to use that small tensioner, okay? Put that into the machine. I'm going to hook that up and then I'm still going to hold the yarn between my finger and my thumb like that and give it just a bit more tension. Um, and I'm going to make sure I go fairly slow for the first couple of rows so that it, it um, catches, okay? But because this yarn likes to split, um, I want to put a little bit more tension on it so those, those hooks of the needle pick it up. If it's loose, then the hooks of the needle split it. Okay. Okay, so there we go. And you set your yarn, your row counter to zero um, on your last row of your waist yarn, which I did not do. So I'm going to, I'm going to knit five rows and I'm going to do it. So then I know where I'm at. Okay, so this is three. This is four. And five. Okay, so before I get all around, I'm gonna count it to zero. You're going to do 95 rows um, of this color. And for me, I'll do 90 because I've already done, this is five. Um, but you're going to do 95 rows. And if you're using the same yarn that I'm using, I've got medium tension on it, and you're just gonna go slowly, just like this. This is the main, the speed that I'm going to maintain. Um, and then my, my machine just loves it. And sometimes because I might squeeze my fingers a little bit too tight and put a little extra tension on it, that's when you hear that little snapping. Um, because it takes a little more effort to go, and generally it's where those black needles are. So watch, they're coming around, and I'll make it happen, just so you can see. Oh, now it didn't happen. But because it takes a little, oops. It takes a little bit more um, tension on your handle to get past those black needles. Um, but anyways, I'm going to keep going until I get 95 rows. And once I get um, far enough till it's touching the table, I'll stop and, and uh, let you see how I roll it up. If you already know how to, to do that, then um, keep going till you get 95 rows and complete 95 rows. See, we, also, we often hear people struggle with, with their handles making that noise and it, they think there's something wrong with their machine. Um, I really, truly, honestly believe it's not the machine or the handle, it's the operator <laughs> and the yarn. I'm sorry guys, but it happens to me too, you heard it, but now you're seeing that I'm doing this with, with absolutely no problem. It's not making that noise at all and it's because I found the speed that my machine likes with this yarn and I figured out the tension that it likes with this yarn and now it's going smoothly with no, gr with no grinding. Okay, so you keep going, find the right tension, find the right speed for your yarn, and uh, do 95 rows. And when you get that done, I'll see you back. This yarn is working so beautifully in my machine. And you know what? I think that... Um, this proves, the fact that this yarn is working in this machine right now proves that static is, is a problem in the winter. Because in the winter, I tried using this yarn and it would tuck on pretty much every stitch. And so, well, not every stitch, that's a little exaggerated, sorry. <laughs> I take that back. But it would tuck a lot and it would drive me nuts. And so I stopped using it, but now I pulled it out and I'm at row 59, just clicked on 60. And I have had no problem. And the speed that you just saw me going was, was what I maintained um, throughout the whole project. And it just was going just beautifully. And this yarn is, oh my goodness, it's so gorgeous. Okay, so I'm going to, because it's touching the table, I'll do that again. It's touching the table. So then it loosens up on the, on the um, tension here. And that's how, how when it gets loosened, when this starts to bunch up and loosen up on here, then we get um, uneven tension uh, around our needles here when we're knitting. But also we risk this uh, picking up and dropping one of these little loops off the red teeth. And when that happens, we drop a row. So when it starts to get too long, we want to pick it up, roll it into a donut. And by doing so, that... Um, that tightens the tension around the barrel, makes for better stitches and prevents um, dropped stitches, okay? So I'm gonna keep going till I get to um, row 95 and then I'll see you back. All right, so I'm at row 95. I finished row 95 and I kept rolling that up as I, as I was going. I'm going to cut my yarn end. I'm going to open the latch. I'm gonna take out my, 
my little um, tensioner, which I have come to absolutely love. I used this smallest tension hole right here, um, but I also still hold held it with my fingers, with my, between my um, finger and my thumb um, as it passed like from from down below here um, and gave it just a little bit more tension than what that was because with fine yarn like this it splits easily um, if you put more tension on it then um, it goes underneath those needles better it's it's when it's loose then that hook of that needle splits the yarn okay and so you want to have it tighter so that it picks up up and goes tightly under that needle so I'm gonna grab my waist yarn now this is probably not a great color uh, well no I can see it okay and then I'm going to add my waist yarn, pull that, and then I'm going to do about seven or eight rows of waist yarn. I'm going to just give this a little tie because I'm not going to work on this right away. I'm going to do the, the next piece for it. Okay, and I'm going to do eight rows of waist yarn, and then I'll see you back. All right, waist yarn is done, so I'm going to cut it off open the yarn guide, put it between the last white and the first black, shut that latch so when I rotate the, the barrel, the needles don't clip this little piece here and break it or break the needle. And you're going to rotate twice until your beautiful piece comes off. Oops, my light turned around the other way, so this might be dark. If it is, my sincere apologies. Okay, so there we have it off. Now we're going to um, remove our machine. We're going to grab our Addy 22 needle machine. For our second color, you're going to do the exact same process. I'm going to do a, a thin band of white, um, an Addy like 22 needle uh, tube of white. So I'm gonna add waste yarn. I'm going to do 95 rows of this um, soft white. And then I'm gonna add waste yarn at the end and remove my project. Do it exactly the way I did this with my band color. Um, and then once I get that done, I'm going to remove it from my machine and then I'll see you back. So you go ahead and do exactly what we just did, but do it on your Addy machine um, with waste yarn, the color you want for the brim, um, for that for that panel that goes at the top of your, of your um, cap and uh, then do waste yarn at the end and remove it from your Addy 22 or your Centro 22 and then see me back with both pieces, okay? All right, so now that we have both pieces off the machine, we are going to stitch up the ends, okay? So you're gonna need your two bobby pins or your stitch markers. You're gonna, I use a um, uh, um, 4.5 cro millimeter crochet hook to close the ends, but you can choose what you're comfortable with. You're gonna unroll your piece. Oh man, I just love this. It's so soft. It's gonna be the perfect, perfect yarn for this project, okay? You're gonna stretch this out widthwise and lengthwise. Just to soften that up and even out your rows. And you're going to take one end. This is the the end of the project because it unravels so easily. <laughs> That's how you know which is the beginning and the end. The one that unravels easily is the end. Okay, so we're going to take that. We're going to undo that little knot. We're going to grab that first stitch on the right. So the one that your waist yarn is coming out of, you're going to pop a stitch marker in there. Then on the other side, you're going to just pull on this and you can see that there's two stitches there one on top of the other and this one is the trail from from your yarn see just like that you're going to pop it in that one we know that we have 46 stitches all around okay so first of all we're going to put those out into the outside because if you sew them in it's it's sad because then you have to rip it apart <laughs> to get at your tails. Okay, so we're going to count this as number one. We know there's 46 around, so 43 and 44 are our very side stitches here. So I'm going to count around to 23. One, two, three. This white color yarn wasn't the best because there's white flecks in this, but I can, I can see where they are, but you can't probably on the camera. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So 23 and 24 are the very side stitches, okay? So I'm going to go under 24, count that as one, pick up 23, bring it through the loop on my yarn, or on my hook, so that's two. Then I'm going to go down to the bottom here, grab the next one, bring it through that loop on my hook, then go up to the top, 
then to the bottom and you're counting all your stitches as you go that's five up to the top six seven eight nine ten and you're going to do this pattern until you get all the way to the end this will be 45 and this will be 46 okay so go to the all the way to the end and then i'll see you back when you're done all right so this is 45 i'm gonna go underneath pull out that stitch marker oops and they're too short so i've dropped them and then this is 46 pull on this pull it up so i can get under there I'm going to finish that stitch off. Then I'm going to take my yarn end, my tail. I'm going to yarn over and pull it through that loop and tighten it, okay? Then I can go ahead and pull off my waist yarn. I'm going to use this waist yarn again. So I'm going to take my time and I'm going to wind it up. Just like so. So go ahead, remove your waist yarn, and then we'll do the other side. All right, there you have it. Isn't that beautiful? This would make such a beautiful summer poncho. I think I might have to make another one. <laughs> Check out my my vi um, videos for summer poncho. You're going to love it, okay, if you haven't seen it already. Okay, so I'm going to then now turn it around to the other side, undo that little knot. We're going to find that stitch that's the first stitch. So when you pull on your waist yarn here, see there it's coming out. When you pull on it, that loop that it's going through is the one you're going to put your first bobby pin in, okay? Then you're going to go to the right of that and the loop that's, okay, you see that this is coming out here. The loop, the two loops that are right beside it, just like that, you're gonna take the top one, okay? And then we're gonna count around to 23 and 24 and we're going to do the exact same thing to close this end, okay? Then once we do that, we're gonna take our smaller tube. We're going to also stretch that out lengthwise and widthwise and we're going to close both ends the same exact way that we did this however because there's only 22 needles um 11 and 12 are your very corner um ones okay um 11 and 12 yes 11 and 12 <laughs> and then uh and then you can close both of those ends up and when you're done both of these panels i'll see you back all right, so I have this end all attached as well. And I thought I'd just pop on quick in case you're new and you don't know how to take the waist yarn off the, off the beginning of your um, work. If you roll up, um, roll up the very top until you see that first row and it's going underneath all the loops, okay? When you see that first row, then you just roll it up. You're near the end here where, you're, where your yarn end is. You roll it up, you pinch the stitch and you pull out that top row, okay? Then you go down further Okay, do the same thing, pinch the stitch and pull it out. Go down further, roll it up, make sure you're on that top row. You can see that it's attached under that stitch, pinch the stitch and pull it out. I'm gonna do this all the way around the first row, okay? Pinching the stitch so that it doesn't um, all gather up and get knotted, okay? That's a very important part. So I'm almost done. I'm going to continue it here till I get to the end. Almost done. Okay, there's the last stitch right there. And then you can see that it will now unravel, unroll, unravel very, very easily. Okay, so that's how you take out the waist yarn from the beginning of your project. All right, so there you have it. But I want to show you something because sometimes people will panic because when they take their projects off, whether they're the same uh, machine or not, um, one is longer. That's substantially longer than this one. That is because of the tension that I use to stretch it. And so they'll go and they'll they'll sew their project up or they'll do whatever, and then they'll they'll take rows out. Um, if you did the exact same amount of rows, no matter how much how it lines up when you do this, um, if you've done the same exact amount of rows, when it comes to joining them, um, they're gonna it's going to even itself out. Okay, so don't be cutting off edges <laughs> ends of your of your work because you're going to you're going to join them um, 
making sure that you take the same number of stitches from each side. And then when it gets to the end, this is going to naturally stretch itself out to the length of this one. Um, and it's going to be beautiful. So um, if you're noticing that, don't panic about it. Um, I promise you it's going to work out. So grab yourself a darning needle. I'm going to use these ones. These are now my new favorite ones. They're metal. I get them on Amazon and they have a little point, a uh, little curved end, um, and they have a wide opening so I can get my yarn in there. And it, they really have become my favorite needles now. So um, that's what we're going to, I'm going to use. And I'm going to grab my yarn in, I'm going to choose this variegated color, um, but you can choose either one. And then we're, we'll start sewing our two pieces together. Okay. All right, so I have a piece that's longer than the, than the piece that I'm sewing together. I'm going to line these up with um, one of these pieces having an end like this so that I can tie off my end from here with this one and then hide the ends. Okay, and then I'm going to line them up so that on the side I have both, both edges here have the wide part of the V at the bottom. So the V goes like this, okay? And if, if your row naturally lines up on the side like this so that you've got the point of your stitch at the bottom, then give it a half a stitch turn so that you have the wide part going to the left on both pieces, okay? Or to the right if you're left-handed and you're doing it the opposite, okay? And so then I'm going to take a look at my piece here and I'm going to see where that first stitch is, okay? So right up where this knot is, this little tiny little space right there is the first one on this side. And then this one up here, you can grab a bar there. That's the first one on that side. I always miss those two. And I fit, I um, close those off with my ends. So I'm gonna go into the next one, which is the second one on this side and the second one on this side, okay? Now, if I'm going into the second one on each side, then I know that I'm still staying in line and I'm gonna um, finish at the end with the same amount of stitches. So I'm gonna go into that second one. I'm going to pick up two bars. <clears throat> I'm gonna pull it through, leaving a tail, okay? Then I'm gonna go into this next one. Actually, my tail is on this side. Generally, I start here, but because my tail's on this side, I'm gonna start on this side because then my tail will be on that side and it just will make for a nicer finish, I think, when I when I sew these two together, okay? So I'm going to pick up those two bars, but it really doesn't matter, seriously. Um, you choose. And then I'm going to pick up the two bars on this side, two stitches, okay? And I'm going to pull that through. I'm going to be careful that I just line up that same row and I follow that same row all the way down. And, you know, really, if, if you go down four or five inches and you pinch um, then then you can go back up and it will stay in that formation and then you'll be able to stay on that same row with no problem so it's coming out of this stitch I'm gonna go back into there and pick up the next two this is the invisible joint then I see it's coming out of this stitch so I'm gonna go into that stitch and I'm gonna pick up the next two I'm gonna go back and forth like that all the way down the row okay Oops, I've got a little piece that snagged here from the other side, so I'm just going to go underneath that. Take care of that little problem. Oops. You know what? It's just a little, little tiny snag, so I'm going to just cut it off. Knock my camera at the same time, because it really isn't going to make a difference. And then I'm going to go back into that next one, and I'm going to pull up two. Then I'm going to go back in where I came out. Pick up two. Go back where I came out, pick up two. And I'm gonna go down a little distance and then I'll show you. I, I go down quite a ways and then I pull on my end to, to um, join it. So I'm gonna just keep going a little bit here and then I'll, I'll join it with you. I'll pull on this with both ends and it'll close up just beautifully, okay? So let's do a few more. Pick up two bars on that side. Come over to this side, go in where you came out, pick up two bars, staying on the same row, which is very important, okay? Go down a little bit more. It looks like it's slanting here, but it's it's gonna line up once we, once we pull it, okay? So I'm gonna pull there, and then maybe we'll tighten it. I usually go a little bit farther, but for the sake of, of uh, showing you, I'm gonna grab both ends. So I'm gonna, this is my working yarn, and this is my working yarn, and I'm going to just pull until you can't pull anymore and that snugs that up 
nice and beautifully. And because we grabbed the wide part of each stitch, like it was in the same direction, you can see that, that the rows line up and it looks just beautiful. Okay. So then I'm going to continue on down the line. <laughs> so I'm going to turn up that side, making sure I'm staying on the same row. This is where I came out right here. So I'm going to pick up two bars, go back up to here. And it looks like this is not lining up, but I promise you when I get to the bottom, it's going to line up because I did the same amount of stitches on each panel. Okay. Back into here, pick up two, and I'm going to do this technique all the way down to the end. Um, stopping every six or seven inches or so to, to pull on both ends. So you can either pull, take this one and this one and pull, which is what I like to do, or where you end off. So if I do another 10 and I'm down here with my with my yarn end, then I can pinch where I ended off and then pull on the one end um, and it'll essentially do the same thing. Okay, so for really long panels, that's what you have to do. But um, for this one, you can actually, uh, for the whole thing, just pull on both ends and it works beautifully. Okay, so I'm going to continue on down the line and I'll see you when we get to the end. Coming to the end here and I'm just going to finish up and you see how these are lining up beautifully. There's just no other way. If, if you've done the same amount of rows on each panel, then it has to line up. It really, it really does. If you're, if you're, um, you know, following the same sequence of stitches, I've got one left there and one left there. I'm actually going to try to pick it up. Then, then it's going to, it's going to work for you. Okay, so there it is right in there. You could have just left it and, and used your yarn ends, which is what I'm going to do for that one. Okay, I'm going to just use my yarn end and I'm going to pull it. And then we've got a beautiful, beautiful piece. Look at that. It's so beautiful. These colors are gorgeous together because this puts, picks up on the stripe that's in there. Okay, so now, oops, dropped my needle. Now what we're going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to hide all my needles, or all my needles, all my, my needles do go hiding on me lots, but I'm going to go <laughs> and tie off all of my ends um, and hide the ends. And then I'm going to start with a fresh piece of yarn to finish it off. So I'm just going to go into that little stitch at the top there. Tie off in a bit of a knot, just like that. Then I'm going to tie these two off and I'm going to hide them in. And I'm going to go ahead and, and tie them off here on this end too. I'm going to just take this yarn end and I'm going to finish this off. I'm going to go under the stitch at the top here and under the stitch at the top there and uh, finish it off, tie it off and hide the ends. And then we'll move on to the next part. Okay. So for the next part, you're going to need to um, choose your variegated color or your main color. Um, get a fairly long piece, put it on your yarn needle and we, um, and we will um, continue on from here. Okay, I'm just finishing this other side here and I went in and I picked up one more stitch on each side. I didn't do two like I normally do. I just did one to bring me a little bit closer to the top. And then I'm going to go into those first stitches at the top there, pull them together nicely, tie off, hide my ends. Okay, then we are ready for the next part, which if you've done the um the twisted headband, it's the same concept as what we're going to, oh, I have one more to hide, which is what we're going to do, but with a bigger panel. So, um, this is just brilliant. Tina, I'm just proud of you for figuring this out because, um, it really is a brilliant idea. Um, I think it's going to be one of these patterns that, um, is going to be a classic and it's going to, um, it's going to be used by many people. I, I really believe that. And, uh, because it's, it's, um, it's just brilliant. I think it's a wonderful pattern and I'm happy to be able to bring this tutorial to you um, on behalf of Tina uh, and yeah I just give her all the credit for it and here we go I'm gonna hide that one and I don't have to go back and forth twice on this one because I'm going to be um, sewing around that on that edge anyway so it works out fine okay so then what we're gonna do I'm gonna raise my camera we are going to take one end of our piece and we're going to fold it in half exactly in half just like that we're going to do the other the same with the other side actually as well okay so it's nice and flat like that then we're going to tip this up just so you can see it bring up that other end 
and we're going to slide one inside of the other. So if you just pinch where that is, you can just put that in there like that. Fold this over, fold this one over till you have a piece that looks like that, okay? So that's both of these folded in half and slipped inside of one another. Because this is a little bit big and this yarn is so soft and slippery, um, it's a bit of a challenge, but hey, we got this. But this, I think this yarn is like gonna be glorious for this kind of a project, okay? Because it's so soft. And you know what? When you're going through cancer treatments and you're losing your hair and and uh, I'm, I'm sure you, that your head is a little bit tender. I, I'm not sure, I, I mean, I shouldn't say I'm sure because I haven't been there, but um, you just wanna pamper. Use a soft yarn and uh, and make these out of out of a, a nice, soft, smooth, beautiful yarn, okay? So then you're gonna take your, your threaded needle you're going to grab the corner here. You're going to go through that second layer. Then you're going to grab the corner on this one and go through that fourth. Pull it through, leaving a tail. Okay, so that we can tie off and fix that later. Okay, and you're going to do that all the way across. So you're going to just pick up. You don't want a big fat seam. You're just going to pick up that top stitch, top stitch here and four, just like that. Okay, pull it through. And we want it to be fairly tight, okay? Then coming back from this side, pick up that next stitch and go through all four pieces, just grabbing that top layer, okay? Pull it tight. Then I'm gonna move over to this next piece. And you see what I'm doing? Just picking up that very top very top layer, which is two bars on each panel, like just like that. That's two, 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 and two. And evenly go, go across. I'm doing that until you get to the other end, and then I'll meet you there. All right, so I'm almost there. I'm gonna grab both of these and pull them. And because we're just grabbing that top top uh, layer, um, we don't have much bulk there, so it's it's actually beautiful. There's a little loop here from my um, other end, so that's what I'm going to grab for this. Then I'm going to go back into there, pick up that middle one, that outside one. Then I'm going to one more in here, okay? And I don't have the middle one to pick up, but I just want to finish it off in the corner there, okay? Just like that. Then I'm going to go around. One more time, just like that. Go underneath to form a knot and do that one more time. Okay, so there you go. That's one end. I've cut off way too long of a piece, but I'm always, I always do that. I just would rather have longer than too short. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to just seam this closed here too, just on the very edge. Picking up that little loop. And then one more time. Okay, and then I'm gonna hide my ends. I'm not gonna hide that end yet because um, I'm gonna use it. If you don't have um, a long enough end left there, then you easily will attach it for the next next um, project. I made one of these already just um, in practice to see if I could you know, figure out the pattern. <laughs> With Tina's help, she sent me pictures and stuff, but um, I, th I think that this one is long enough to continue and I think it's in the right position, but I won't know until I actually turn this inside out. So now you're gonna just grab this whole thing. You're gonna turn it right side out. Isn't that brilliant? Like, it's just brilliant. That's gonna go to the top of the head. This is in the right place, but I have to bring it through to the top. Um, and then we're gonna sew um, mattress stitch the top part here and it's it's quite simple to do if you have a foam head it's the easiest to do it on a foam head if you don't you can manage um, but I'll just show you what we're gonna do next all right so I placed it on the foam head and depending on which way you you fold your two ends together um, on the pre previous step that we did will de determine which side this goes on my last hat that I did um, cap that I did the cross went the other way um, so it, you know, take note of that if that bothers you, but you could, you know, if you want to have all, if you're making um, a stockpile of these and you want all your um, Vs to go 
the same direction, like your crossover to go the same direction, then take note of how the, the way in which you are putting those two ends together when you do this, whether it's like that or like that or however it is. <laughs> um, because my, like I said, the last, the last hat I have, the V is going the other way. Okay. So this, I brought my yarn up through to the other end. Um, and I'm just going to go down or to the, to the top end, I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to just pick up, I'm just looking in my camera to see if you can see, I'm just going to pick up a little stitch right there. Just to reinforce this, um, this part right here, just a little bit. Okay. And then it's just going to stay in place there. Then I'm going to go underneath between those layers. You can attach a new one too if you like, but um, I'm being careful not to pull it tight um, and compromise the look of the hat. And I'm going to come across till I get to this seam right here, okay? This is what our head, the top looks like, okay? So it's, um, we're going to, we're going to now take this. I don't know if my camera's high enough. Let me just check. Yes, it is okay I'm going to just take this and gently fold it over so it lays in its natural position around the head if you don't have like a, a styrofoam or a plastic head um, maybe put a ball in there or, or find something that's going to help you get that to the right to the right length or put it on somebody else's head um, and um, and then just tack it down a little bit so that you can you can figure out where you're going from here okay now we're going to then turn it on its side once once I know where I want this to fall I'm going to turn that up so that I have the wide part of my v-stitch at the bottom and then I'm going to start picking up a little bit from there and then I'm going to go in and do the mattress stitch here just like what we did before I'm going to pick up two bars and then I'm going to seam that down then I'm going to, when you're following the head here, there's no row to follow. Um, there's no natural row to follow. So you're just going to pick up um, a little stitch wherever your needle may fall. And you're going to follow the same row on this side here. Okay, pick that up. I'm going to snug that down. Having this all smoothed out so you know exactly where, where it's going to lay. Okay, then I'm going to pick up. And Tina, I hope this is how you did it. Um, if not, then I hope that uh, this is okay. <laughs> I think it comes out with the same result. Um, we're going to, oops, this yarn is slippery and it falls off my needle very, very easily. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow that natural curve that, that it's giving me without pulling on it, without tugging, just a nice natural curve. I'm going to follow that all the way down, picking up right close to this side right close to that section okay then i'm going to just pick up go back in where i came out on that other side then every so often i'm going to just push down here and i'm going to pull on that to join that seam together see it's just it's beautiful okay a little bit tighter there then i'm going to continue the work I want to make sure I'm not stretching that so I have that over here and this over there. I want a nice even line. So you're going to form it on your head and smooth it out beautifully and then you're going to just follow that natural arch down without pulling, without compromising the looks of of the um Where's my uh row oh, there it is. Tucked it underneath a little bit. Without compromising you know the, the the fabric you don't want to have stretched in certain places because you're pulling too tight just nice and smooth not compromising um the look of the of the bean of the cap okay keep going in then pick up two bars and go all the way down and when i get closer to the end i'm going to see you back okay Okay, so I'm almost at the end. Let me just tilt this a little bit. I'm almost at the end and I'm just going to keep holding that nice and smoothly. 
you'll see there's a, it's beginning to form a little point okay and I'm just gonna not still not tug on it I'm just gonna continue all the way up to the point okay so picking up following that same row that's under there just doing the best you can if you have to move your row over a little bit um, then you can but I haven't had to I didn't have to on the other one and I'm sure I won't have to this way you just got to you just got to be very careful okay there we go I'm gonna go in there then I'm gonna pick up a little bit here and get one more in there come across to here okay and then I'm gonna move up one row just to finish it off there just so that I can get to that point okay and then come up one row there okay so then I'm going to from there I'm gonna press down there and pull okay so it's like a little cone <laughs> I'm getting like a little cone there but from there we are going to simply tuck that down under ever so gently we need to have this outside though so let's just trail this up into the end just like there pick the pick the edge okay and then you're going to tuck that down and fold it over and then you're going to have a little about five inch she said about a five inch um edge there and i'm going to measure that in a second because I didn't uh, tie a knot there before I started so that it doesn't gather, I'm gonna just reinforce it like that, okay? Then I'm going to just seam this down, okay? I'm going to just go over, sorry, did I go off the camera? I'm going to go over to this side. I'm gonna follow this same row because detail is everything. I say that in every video. Um, you want to, as much as you can, um, Focus on the detail and do what you know is going to make it look the most um, even, okay? If I would have just crisscrossed over to a different row there, um, because it would have been easier, then um, you would see that, and it just doesn't look as good. So I'm going to go into that corner, and then I'm going to pull up a stitch just that matches that corner and come up into that seam, and I'm going to just tie, oops, if I can get it under there, I'm trying to hold this at an angle that you can see okay and I'm going to pinch that with my thumb and get that down there now I'm going to rotate this I'm going to slip underneath there come up to the middle and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side okay and when I'm done that we will be done this beautiful cap so go ahead and finish that and then I'll see you back all right, so I have that finished. I took my mannequin head off because now I've got the shape. I'm going to poke that down into the inside, okay? And then we've got this little piece here that's got a little flap, okay, from when we folded it over. I'm going to just neatly sew that down. So I'm gonna, if I might run out of yarn here, but I'm going to trail this up. Um, now I'm just going to reemphasize that it's imperative that you use soft yarn, um, not only because it feels good on the head but because it helps this um hat this, this i keep calling it a hat well it is a hat um to to keep its shape and to for these little this little piece that's here that we just worked on on the outside to lay nice and smooth and to be beautiful looking um if you use a, a heavier yarn that's coarse um you won't have quite as nice of a finish and uh and we want to have a beautiful finish. And I was thinking as I was sewing this up too that, you know, I, I mentioned in the video that if you make them for somebody that you know who has cancer, it's just a beautiful sentimental thing that, you know, that you can do for them. Uh, just a wonderful little gift idea. But then I was thinking, maybe you're making it for yourself. Maybe there's somebody in my group who has cancer or more than one of you who um, who is dealing with cancer right now and you need to use this pattern for yourself. Um, I just want to tell you that um, I'm proud of you. Be brave, um, be strong. Uh, I said a little prayer for anybody who might be in that situation, asking God to give you strength and peace. And uh, and, and stay strong, my friends. Uh, know that we care for you and we are encouraged, we want to encourage you. And, um, and we hope that, uh, that you find strength and healing. So there is the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cap. I, I'm just so 
so um, happy about this pattern um, and I knew right away that I wanted to do it just simply um, for the simple fact that I had a friend who passed away from brain cancer. I'm at, a, at quite a young age and, uh, and and I remember making crocheting these for her and, and how much love went into every stitch as I did that um, for her. And so um, this, this particular pattern um, is touching a chord with me as well. So there you go. This is what it looks like. I think it's gorgeous. Um, again, Tina, you are uh, an inspiration and I thank you so much for sharing your pattern with all of us. Um, I, I really um, appreciate that very much as I know uh, the rest of the group does and those who subscribe to this channel. Um, folks, if you haven't um, hit that like button, please do, do so, so YouTube can get this pattern out. If you are in a part of um, my Facebook group, then make if you make this, show us. Um, we want to be inspired by the colors and the work that you do, but I'm you know, I'm also asking you to show it in other Facebook groups. That is not, I don't say that to take over other Facebook groups in any other way, in any way at all. I appreciate everybody who, who has channels and who has um, things that they make, but um, it helps to get the pattern out there so that more people who might not be in my channel or who aren't in my on my channel and in my Facebook group can, can see this. And, and maybe it's something that's going to be um, just what they're looking for as well. So please share my patterns in, in other communities that you're a part of. Um, I'd appreciate that. So here you go. It's beautiful. Thank you so much, my friends. Um, I hope that uh, you were blessed in making one. Um, have a blessed day. Take care. We'll see you soon.